lot of uh, new coaches um, that are trying to get to know players. But I wanted to ask you the benefit you think of having – there's a couple guys on your staff that have been, been with you at Penn State since you've been here, um, Brent Pry, Dwight Galt, uh, and Terry Smith. What's the benefit uh, of having them around you in this difficult time? And how much do you lean on them maybe for to consult with or just for advice? Yeah, I think overall the consistency in the program is 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 really important. Um, it's it's more challenging than ever in, in college football, um, but but having guys like Brent Pry, like you mentioned, who's been with me, you know, from the beginning, and Dwight Galt, and then all my administrative staff as well, a bunch of the rest of the strength staff, uh, and then Terry's been with us, you know, since day one at, at Penn State, and being a Penn Stater, I think that helps too. So, um, yeah, there's there's tremendous value. I don't know if I would necessarily say in this circumstance um, that that value jumps out like it normally does. And what I mean by that is, you know, typically I'm talking to Dwight Galt about his experience. Uh, I'm talking to Brent Pry about his experiences, both with me and without me. Uh, Terry Smith, the same thing. So this is a situation where, Again, no one's ever experienced this before. And like I said, you know, we try to plan for everything. I think you guys know before the season starts, we have the practice models for all the bowl games, um, for all of them uh, set. So anyone that we could possibly go to, we, we try to be as organized as possible. This is not something that, that you know, we could be organized for. Um, you know, and again, leaning on those guys is important, and I still do that. But it's just different because no one's experienced this before. Rich Scarcella, Red Eagle. Hi, James. How are you? I hope your hey, family are well. You too. Um, you too. Thank you. Um, James, you mentioned this earlier, but you're a guy who is uh, always seems to be in motion, always seems to have a lot of energy on the move. How are you dealing with this being confined? more or less to your house. And secondly, do you plan on doing or recording a PSA? Yes. So um, it's it's different. It's different for me. Um, I'm a guy I'll work and watch film in my office and then get up and walk around the office. I'll sit in the offensive room, the defensive room, the recruiting staff. I'll, I'll stop down and see the guys in the training room or in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the weight room or whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, it's different. There's no doubt about it. I think, you know, the first couple of days, my wife and kids were so happy to see me. And, and about now they're, they're, they're ready for me to go back to work. Um, but, um, you know, right now, you know, we're, we're, at, we're in a condo and uh, there's a weight room that me and my wife have tried to go down and use. But there's other people in the, in the weight room. And uh, we kind of got into an interesting deal the other day because I won't go in, we won't go in the weight room with other people in there. And uh, so I, I took the 25 pound weights and brought them up to, to our apartment because, or the condo, because um, we couldn't get in there. Guy was dominating the, the, the weight room for two hours a day. And then he left a nasty note in there. He said, whoever stole the 25 pound uh, weights, could you bring them back? So then I wrote, put a little note and said, well, could you stop dominating the weight room for three hours a day? So it's, uh, it's been different for all of us. There's no doubt about it. Um, but, you know, I, I, think, I think one of the things that, again, I've tried to do is, is embrace it and, um, on, and focus on the positives and focus on the things that we can do to, to support the players and support the staff, embrace the technology as much as we possibly can, um, and, and then try to stay active. You know, uh, whether that's me doing the body weight workout in, in my in my house, whether it's going on, on walks uh, with my wife, whatever, whatever it may be, trying to stay active as we possibly can uh, with our kids. So just trying to embrace it all, Rich. Elton Hayes, CNHI. Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, I know the uh, 11 freshmen arrived early on campus to uh, kind of get a head start in their college careers. I wanted to know what, that, what this break kind of does for them psychologically with starting something and then having to uh, take a break from it and then restart it at a later point. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting 
because they, they obviously work really hard in high school to graduate early and try to get a head start on a college career. And now they've lost a good portion of that. You know, I do think the winter workouts, I do think the lifting, I do think the meetings have still been valuable for them in their adjustment period. Um, but spring ball was a huge part of that. I think the other guys, the other guys that weren't able to come early um, in some ways are a little, uh, a little happy. Uh, because now they're not going to be as far behind those guys. I know Theo Theo said something to me the other day, um, you know, because he he came in with a pre-existing injury and, and wasn't going to be able to, you know, go this spring. And Theo's like, well, I'm kind of happy now because, you know, uh, by the time we get back going, I'll be full go. So, you know, it's it's an interesting dynamic. There's no doubt about it. Um, but you know, again, so far, you know, so good. I think our guys have done a pretty good job of keeping uh, a big picture perspective on all of this. And we've tried to kind of reinforce that in our meetings as well. Um, you know, uh, it just, we just want to be sensitive. There's, there's some real challenges going on across the world, some real challenges going on in our country, uh, whether that's health, whether that's financial, whatever it may be. And again, you know, we want to be focused on those things, but but yeah, for the freshmen that have only been there a couple of weeks and we're just starting to get adjusted and, and now we're sent home, um, you know, obviously uh, an interesting dynamic. Paul Meyerberg, uh, USA Today. Hey, James. Thanks for taking the time again today. Hey, Paul. Um, how are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, as you've alluded to a few times, um, it's hard to predict what next week's going to look like, let alone next month. Um, however, in a, in a really broad sense, given that your team is spread out, you're not participating in a traditional conditioning program. You haven't had your traditional practices in the spring. At what very general point, again, this summer, do you believe that you'd have to have your team back on campus to be reasonably and comfortably prepared to begin the season as scheduled? I think that's a great question. We actually just talked about that exact question this morning. So I'm having my sports scientists, my strength staff, uh, the training staff, everybody getting together because the, the day before I was having a conversation with our athletic director, Sandy Barber, and we had the same discussion. You know, what is that? Is it 30 days? Is it 45 days? Is it 60 days? Is it 90 days? What is needed to make sure that, that we're going to be in good shape, that the players are going to be able to, to you know, protect themselves um, and, and be able to go out and compete at a high level? And, and what, is that, what does that look like? Um, literally, we just started that discussion yesterday, um, me and the athletic director. I've had, a, again, a, another discussion this morning with my staff. Uh, I have my opinion. I want to hear what my strength staff thinks. I want to hear what my coaching staff thinks to coordinators and, and what they need from a time standpoint as well, offensive, defensive, and special teams coordinator, as well as the strength staff and as well as our training staff, you know, because a lot of this we're talking about injury prevention as well. So. Um, I, I wish I had a specific answer for you, but we just started talking about that. Kind of to your point, we had already worked on about six different models. So if we were able to get back in a month, if we were able to get back in six weeks, if we were able to get back in you know, um, you know, uh, you know two months, if we were able to get back in, in you know, whatever the time period was, we started kind of breaking it out. What's this going to look like? For us, from a football perspective, I talked to the staff about it this morning. Uh, we usually get vacation time in the summer. I, I, I told the staff I had a conversation with my wife. You probably need to have a conversation with your wife and start to prepare your family. There's a chance that we won't get any vacation time this summer because everything's just going to be bumped back. So um, there's a lot of things to work through, Paul. And I wish I had a I wish I had a specific answer for you, but we're literally just starting to really dig deep on that one. Dave Jones, Penn Live. Hi, James. How are you doing? Good, David. How are you? Um, I've been spending a lot of time with family. Um, Good. Richie, <laughs> Richie kind of uh, touched on this. Um, has 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 being around and and having a, a, a your routine completely flipped upside down? Have have you thought about how that has affected? you has it affected you at all and being around families so much more or, or not yeah so you know i i would say being around the family 
um, is always something that 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 I try to maximize as much as I possibly can, even when times are crazy. So there's that fine line with me, and I tried to remind my whole staff about this today. In in some ways, this is a, a blessing in disguise. I'm getting more time with my 12 year old daughters than I have in a long time. So. I'm gonna embrace that as much as I possibly can. There's also the fine line. I had a big discussion with my wife because because whenever I'm home, you know, I, I feel sometimes like I'm pulled in different directions. So if a recruit calls or one of the staff calls and I'm with my family, so I had a discussion with my wife about like how this is gonna go. And you know, you know, literally if we're working remotely, yeah, I'm home, but I still gotta put in a certain number of hours every single day to work. But you know, it's, what's great is my daughters can run in and give me a hug and I can run out and have lunch with them or whatever it may be. Um, so the time is, 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 is great. It really is. Time is, the time is special, um, but it is different. And I think, I think what I've learned is just having a discussion about what everybody's expectations are beforehand, I think is really important because if it's okay, you know, everybody's home, and my wife and my kids have a certain expectation of what that's going to look like, and it's not, then I disappoint them, and I never want to do that. So, um, you know, we've tried to have really good discussions about that. You know, what's great now is every morning they wake up, they see me. Every night when they go to bed, they see me, and that's not always the case, you know, during certain times of the year. So, so once again, um, you know, as you guys know, I'm a, I'm a positive guy, and although this is a really challenging time, you know, I'm trying to embrace it. I'm trying to focus on the things that we can control and not be frustrated frustrated by the things that we can't. And and also finding some of the 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 you know the hidden gems in there. You know, the the embracing the technology, finding different ways to communicate with your players, the more time with your children, the more time with your wife. Um, you know, I think I think all those things are, are positives. And again, because of my daughter's illness. We've been on on lockdown, you know, from really the beginning. You know, it's not something we've messed around with at all. We've we've been on total lockdown. We've got time for a few more questions. Mike Porman, statecollege.com. Oh, sorry, Mike. There you go. Now you're unmuted. My bad. I hope everything's well with you and your family, James. You too, Mike. Thanks. Um, have you started talking now? Obviously, you started thinking about the very real financial implications of this, especially given what you're trying to do with Lash and especially given the football's role as a, the breadwinner for the, you know, for all of athletics. Uh, is it too early to think about that? No, I, I mean, literally they, those were conversations from, from day one. Um, this is going to have a major impact uh, on some universities more than others. Um, obviously, if this, if this continues to roll into the fall, uh, it's going to have it's going to have significant impacts. I think I think everybody is aware of that. So uh, there's been a lot of discussions with myself and my staff about that already to prepare them for that. Um, been a lot of conversations with me and Sandy. Uh, you know, I think in a perfect world, you know, we can like I said, we can lock this thing down. You know, over these next couple weeks and, and month, and uh, hopefully be able to get back to things. You know. Um, you know uh, similar to what they've been in the past, you know, hopefully by summertime or late summertime and, uh, you know, hopefully by the fall. Obviously, if this goes into the fall, um, you know, with the revenue that football brings in for Penn State or for the revenue that football brings in a lot of universities across the United States, that's going to be a whole nother, a whole nother conversation. So, um, so yeah, we, we've, we've had these conversations. And I think the other thing is, the thing that that I think is has been a, a positive as well is I think Penn State, um, our administration, not only athletic administration but our administration uh, for the university, President Barron and, and David Gray and, and everybody involved, also understands the impact that this has on the community, the hotels, the the businesses, the restaurants, the bars. Um, this is this is this is a major this is a major challenge. So. Um, I, number one is is health and, and safety, and, and number two is is making sure that we can do things, um, you know, from a financial responsibility, from an economic perspective, for our community, for our state, uh, and then specifically for for our university as well. Donnie Collins, Grand Times Tribune. Hey James. Hey uh, Donnie. 
you, you talked earlier about a couple times actually about finding hidden gems it, from a coaching aspect i'm wondering if there's if there's been any aspect of this that has been easier to deal with than you thought it would be or, or, or more difficult than you thought it would be yeah I, i'm not i'm not sure about uh that um that, that i would describe it the way you did right but i but i get your point um I do, I do think the technology and our IT staff and then specifically our video staff, um, a lot of you guys know Jevin. Jevin has done a phenomenal job through all of this um, of making sure that our, our staff has what they need, players have what they need. It's amazing. We have NFL players that are reaching back to us asking if they can get back on our system because they don't have it in the NFL. Um, you know, some, some, some of our players have been locked out of the facility before they could pick up, you know, their iPads or their laptops or whatever it is, and they don't have any of their film or anything. So they've reached out to us if they can gain access to our Penn State film again. So uh, Jevin's done a phenomenal job. Um, and, I, and I would say the technology has been better and uh, allowed us to get some norm normalcy back in our lives. Uh, I think the Zooms have been phenomenal. Um, you know, one of my, one of my best friends uh, um, is Raheem Morris um, with the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, he talked a lot of the stuff that, that they're doing. I've had a lot of GMs calling me about the draft. Obviously, we haven't even talked about that, about, you know, our guys not ha able to have a pro day and things like that. Um, that that's the things that I would say have probably been challenging and, and concerning. I, I wish I wish the NFL would push the draft back to take pressure off of of, of all these players and take pressure off of, of these universities and agents and, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, so they still have the best chance to 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 be evaluated. Um, so that's that's challenging. I think you know not knowing when this is going to end. It's one thing if we could say, okay, in two weeks or in a month, we know this is gonna be over to allow everybody to plan. That's probably the thing to me, that's the, that's the most challenging and probably uncomfortable because I wanna be able to come up with a very specific plan that I can give our players and parents. Uh, when I talk to the players and pa parents, that's probably the, the main question I get. Coach, do you have any idea when this is gonna you know, end? And I don't, I don't have that answer. So I think the technology has been better and, um, you know, probably better and, and more accessible than, than I thought and allowed us to, to get some normalcy back in our life. But just the unknown of this has probably been the thing that's, that's, that's most unsettling because I can't give people a specific plan. I can't give our players a specific plan. I can't give our families a specific plan. I can't give our, 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 our coaches, our players, their parents, look, this is the plan. And uh, I think in, in, a, you know, in, in college athletics and specifically football, where it's so structured and so disciplined, you know, that's, that's very unusual for all of us. Um, so, you know, again, you know, um, you know, the time with the family is the hidden gems, the technology is the hidden gems, um, you know, um, finding different ways to communicate, finding different ways to maximize our time and, and things like that uh, has been positive, but there's, there's probably just as many challenges. Our last question today will come from Corey Geiger, Altoona Mayor. Hi, James. How hey, are your players doing in terms of their lives? And we're talking about a lot of logistics and football and all of these things, but are, have you been able to gauge really – just how your young men are doing. They've had their school taken away. They've had what they love to do taken away. How, how are these guys holding up in their own personal lives? Yeah, and again, there's, there's I want to be careful here because, uh, you know, you paint with a, with, a, with a broad brush here. I'm going to give you a kind of how I think overall the team is, but there's a lot of individual situations that are very challenging, that are very difficult. Um, from a lot of different perspectives, you know, whether it's their home situation, whether it's finances, uh, whether it's, you know, where they're sleeping, whether, where they're eating, all, all these things that, you know, are pretty much taken care of for them at, at Penn State. Um, you know, th those, things are, those things are challenging. But I think overall what I would say is early on, 
early on, um, I think there was, there was a lot of concern. I think there was a lot of uneasiness. Uh, people were unsettled. People were concerned. And I still think that's there, but I've gotten to a point where we've, able, we've been able to bring back some of the structure and been able to bring back some of um, the interaction that I think has been helpful. So I think guys are starting to get back into this routine, which is strange, but they're, they're kind of figuring out what they have to do. You know, we've talked to them about they still got to get up, set their alarm and get up in the morning, kind of have a routine every single day. Um, you know, obviously, you know, getting the online classes going where our guys are comfortable with how to do that and who has Internet in their home and who doesn't and, and all those different types of things. Um, being able to send them workouts so they feel like they still can, can, can get something out of their day when it comes to their physical development. Being able to get on and be able to look each other in the face and have a discussion. When I look at Joe Giuliano right now, and I look at Corey Geiger, and I look at Ben Jones, and I look at all your faces. You know, even this is good for me to interact with you guys. I think it's the same thing with our players. So mm. at first, I think there was a thousand questions, and we didn't have a whole lot of answers for them. And every day, I think they get more into their routine. We have more answers. But the big question is still out there of when is when is this going to end? Uh, so I think that's that's the one you know that's still kind of hovering over everybody's head. Thank you, Coach. Thanks everybody for joining us today, and uh, we'll be in touch with uh, the audio and video and whatnot from the call today. So appreciate everybody's time. Guys, thank you so much. I hope that was helpful. And again, uh, take care of yourselves and your families. All the best, to everybody. Thanks, James. Yeah, you too. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.